I can't, no sound. No sound. You're fine, Kelly. I can't hear you. I can't hear you.
and we're going to accept and need your help. Good morning, everybody. My name is Brandon Bolin. I'll be the uh, the instructor this summer. We have a huge crew. I think we have 40 on here right now, 41. I think we're expecting 50. So I'm not, I'm not sure I've been on a Zoom meeting this large. So um, with, a, with a crew this large, if you if you will, keep, uh, keep in mind this meeting is recorded. And also, uh, you know, feel free to ask questions and comment as, as uh, as you feel like you need to, but keep in mind we have a big group, so microphones muted um, when you're not speaking. Um, I would love your your uh, my computer's telling me it sounds like I, I'm speaking a different language. Is it is am I speaking that poorly? That's not good. Uh, <laughs> the um, I would like you guys to turn on your cameras if if you're able to. Um, you know, we are scheduled from nine to noon today. We won't be anywhere close to that long, I don't think. Um, we'll probably be more like nine to 10, 15 or 10, 30, if I had to guess. Okay, so we just want to make sure we block off enough of y'all's time to to make sure we cover the things we want to. But we'll be we'll be pretty, pretty quick this morning, I believe. Um, to give you a little bit of information about myself. Uh, like I said, my name is Brandon Bolin, and I'm an economics professor at Mississippi College. Um, actually, my first job, I, I, I went to Mississippi State and studied economics all the way through school, uh, undergrad and grad school. And my first job out of school, actually, I taught and coached uh, high school basketball. So I used to be in the high school classroom. I used to teach high school economics. Um, my students used to call me Coach Bolin. Uh, my, well, my wife and I, we started, um, we had, you know, young children and I went back to school and finished a PhD at Mississippi College six years. So now my students call me Dr. Boland, but um, occasionally you guys know, uh, probably familiar with this, but you know, you're, I'm out at a restaurant or something, see an old student. I'm not really sure what class I taught them in. I know they're my student. I can't remember their name and whether they call me coach or doctor tells me at least what school, what school I taught them at uh, somewhere along the way. But um, all that to say, I, I, um, I've been teaching economics something like 12 years now, and some of that's in a high school classroom, so I can identify with a lot of uh, what you guys are doing, and some of that's in a college classroom. I've taught online for community colleges across the state. I've taught online for private universities like Bellhaven and so forth across the state. Um, I taught at Mississippi State when I was there in grad school, so I've taught economics a little bit everywhere across our state. and. Um, and then one of my favorite things to do is, of course, is to work with people like you guys in the summer. Um, so it's kind of a different a different uh, experience to teach teachers or to, I don't, it kind of feels different than teaching students, obviously, just trying to help teachers grow in their field and be able to do well uh, in their classroom, do right by their students. So um, anyways, that's, my, that's who I am. That's my experience with economics. Like I said, I've been teaching 11 or 12 years um in all sorts of classrooms online in class and so forth um i'm going to start this morning by showing a couple videos so how many of you guys and you can give me a show of hands since we have such a large large crowd or there's a way to to show you know raise your hand here with the reaction button uh, how many of you guys have ever taken a master teacher course before in some other field or maybe even economics years ago see a few that's good Okay, is anybody willing to uh, share their experience with a previous master teacher class? Tell us what you took and tell us how it went and how it helped you. Uh, hello, I'm Tanisha Finley. Uh, I've actually taken two mastery courses. I've done um, CTE and finance. What I like about the courses are that um, they're self-paced. Um, you can finish when you want to. Um, you can do as much or do as little as long as you finish by the due date. Um, and I enjoyed all the activities. And I actually got to go to the Empowered um, workshop and met for three days and got to meet a lot of the people. So it was awesome. And I definitely enjoyed it. That's why I'm doing it again. 
Yeah, that's great. So you've done two before and this will be your third and all the classes are a little different, but like you said, they're self-paced. I'll have some of you guys that'll run through the course in a week or two. And some of you that will be finishing it the last hour, like our students do. Um, I've, I've found through the years that teaching teachers is a lot like teaching students in the sense that all the things we get onto our students for, we tend to do ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, don't wait till the last minute, you know, <laughs> and then we take a course in the summer and what we do, we wait till the last minute, you know? So, um, Anyways, that's that's great. But uh, thank you for sharing that. And anybody else have a, a experience with Miss Master Teacher classes they'd like to share? Um, I did the Master Teacher of Entrepreneurship, and it was pretty similar. It's a pretty good program, pretty quick, self-paced, uh, well worth it, especially if you just need some CEUs as well. That's not, never a never a bad thing and yeah, i'm hoping this true. is similar it's a, it was a pretty decent time yeah yeah so the ceus are great nobody wants to say it but you guys also get a stipend right so that's uh it's also a reason for being here uh but there's nothing wrong with being we're, it's an economics class people respond to incentives so there's that's uh that's also an incentive you see use a little stipend and and so forth and and ultimately we're trying to put resources in your hands to help equip you to to do well in the classroom um, to help, to help you guys get more familiar with the discipline of economics and also to have resources going to classroom, be successful and uh, ultimately help our students. That's what we're here for is ultimately to help you, to help your students. Um, so I'm going to start by showing you guys a video or two. Um, if you're not familiar with Mississippi Council and Economic Education, the head of the Mississippi Council is, is Selena Schwarzfeger. So Selena has recorded a couple videos, like kind of introductory videos to who Mississippi Council of Economic Education is and a little bit about these courses. So I'm going to play those. She's not here with us this morning, but I'm going to play those videos so you guys can see her face and hear a little bit about the organization. So I'm going to do that. Um, and if you guys have questions, I see the chat's blowing up, just mainly greetings here. I'll, I'll catch up on the... I'll, I'll um. I'll catch up on the chats here. If you need to ask me a question that's kind of uh, individual, shoot me an individual chat or put it in the chat if it's helpful to others. And I'll try to catch up with the chat periodically. But like I see a hand raise. So if you have a hand raise, does that mean you have a question? Shoot me, a, send it in the chat. So I'll know um, if you will. Let's see. I'm going to share my screen and show this video. All right, can everybody see my screen? I see at least a nod and a thumbs up. All right, I'm going to play it. Y'all give me a thumbs up if you can hear the sound. Let's make sure the sound's working. Hi, everyone. Selena Schwartzfeger from the Mississippi Council on Economic Education. And I wanted to just tell you a little bit about what we call MCEE. Some of you are going to be extremely familiar with us and what it is that we do, but then some of you, this will be your first touch point with us. And so I need to just make sure that you know why we are here and what we can do for you. Our organization was created back in 2002 as one of many state councils for economic education. And it was created to answer the question, how will our teachers know how to teach economics in the K-12 setting? And in the beginning, we simply offered one day workshops, but not too far into the process when economics became a required course for high school graduation, we, in partnership with the Mississippi State University Center for Economic Education, created a program called the Master Teacher of Economics program. And it is our longest standing master teacher program that we have. We've had over 800, we're probably getting close to 900 teachers that have completed that program over the years. And it's looked many different ways over the years. Uh, we've made changes as needed. We've answered uh, Are you constantly overwhelmed with your to-do list? Here's what you can do about it. This strategy is so effective, even a... You know, the call for changing things, different types of content, different delivery formats. 
And so um, it has ended up being a 75 content hour course that is offered completely online with the exception of your live orientation. And then the second big program to launch was the Master Teacher of Entrepreneurship. And it is in partnership with the University of Southern Mississippi. That's where um, that program was created. And its purpose, um, you know, the economics course, its purpose was to teach teachers how to teach the required content for economics. And, uh, but entrepreneurship is not a required course, but entrepreneurship is what we like to consider um, the delivery of, of economics. You cannot teach and talk about entrepreneurship without focusing on economics. So it is also a 75 content hour program. Then let's see, the next one that we launched was the Master Teacher of Personal Finance. And that was back before personal finance was required. It was an elective. The State Department of Education said all schools were required to offer it, but students weren't required to take it. Uh, but we still had a lot of personal finance teachers around the state. Huh. And that is also now a 75 content hour course. taught in partnership with uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis and the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. Your instructors are from branches, um, Memphis and New Orleans. Then we launched the Master Teacher of College and Career Readiness just a couple of years ago when college and career readiness became a required course for high school graduation. We created that program to answer that call. Uh, any teacher can be assigned to teach CCR and you know that's good for the schools to be able to have that flexibility but to me one of the worst things that could happen is that a student could be in that one year course and not learn the content that was expected in that class i mean it would be wasted time and so we have worked closely with an expert in ccr Teresa connor as well as um, get to college they are a co-sponsor co instructor on the master teacher of college and career readiness um, side note there is content in that course from next gen personal finance and tim ranzetta who is the co has a researcher looked at the content of ccr and designated that based on the curriculum it was indeed over 50 percent content. So you may just have one module in that course called personal finance, but so much of the get to college and career readiness content also falls under personal finance. I like to say 75% of what you're learning in MTCCR is actually personal finance content. Most people have no clue that in 2023, the best way to make money on Amazon is not with physical Mississippi was in the top 10, uh, first top 10 states to require financial literacy, a semester of personal finance for high school graduation. That's really something to be proud of. So now both economics and personal finance are required. And then our newest program is the Master Teacher of Career Readiness, which we have created for special education teachers because we saw that that was missing. It is in pilot mode this summer. Um, so what that means is we'll be taking, not that we don't take your feedback on the others as well, but we'll really be looking for your feedback. And we fully expect to make changes to that program before it's offered the next time. So, um, but we offer all kinds of one day workshops. We, we support through partner organizations, webinars, so there's really no reason for you to have a need that's related to one of our content areas that we can't fill. And we provide continuing education units for all of those items. So we're doing that. That's on the teacher side. And then on the student side, we have student competitions and programs. 
many, uh, well, all master teachers of econ, personal finance, and college and career readiness must participate in either the math, the uh, economics challenge or the personal finance challenge. Those happen October, December, and March of every year with the top performing teams being invited to Jackson where they compete for college scholarship dollars. Uh, we have the stock market game. Don't forget about that. That training is online on demand. It only takes five hours. You sign up on our website, you get continuing education units, and we have sponsors that cover your team fees. So you don't even have to worry about coming up with the money for your students to play that game. And it's very engaging. The students love it. Um, research has shown that students that complete the stock market gain increase in both math and personal finance knowledge. We have Danny Dollar Academy, which has been for elementary school students, uh, as well as special education middle and high school students. We've done other student programs and competitions, such as the Me competition, um, things that we don't do anymore due to funding, but were, were things that we did at an International Economic Summit. So we're just always looking to be engaging and to offer what you need as a teacher to be great at teaching one of these content hours, uh, hours, content courses. So uh, yeah, that's who we are. That's who MCE is. We've been around for a lot of years now. We're really proud to be able to say that we are in the top five in the nation for delivery and, and implementation and the number of students that are reached with the economics challenge and personal finance challenge, which means you teachers are doing a great job <clears throat> because we're not the ones that are reaching the students you are. Um, so yeah, here we are. We're here for you. We are here to serve and you're always able to let us know what you need if we're not providing something that you need and make sure you watch our what's up wednesday e-newsletter that comes out every wednesday imagine that uh we put all of our offerings in there and um, we try to pay stipends for most of our teacher professional development opportunities we we partner with organizations outside of the state to come in and and give you new fresh offerings. We also partner with organizations inside the state, such as our Mississippi Secretary of State's office. So we try to keep things fresh, um, exciting for you, and we're here to serve. Your child needs. All right, uh, is everybody hearing the sound okay? I know there's some advertisements popping up and interrupting. Okay, great. Uh, so that's Selena. That's a little bit about Mississippi Council. Like she mentioned, there, there are a series of master teacher courses they offer on, in addition to things like one day workshops and um, the economics challenge, the, the stock market game, some of those things that um, are really great resources for your students and great resources for you as a teacher. Um, I actually have one more video from Selena to show you. Uh, and that should be it. And we'll, we'll talk more about, we'll get, jump into the course after that. Um, but let's, let's look at one more video from Selena. It's a little shorter and, and then I'll try to skip as many of these YouTube advertisements as possible, as quickly as possible. Hi everyone. I'm Selena schwartz -Fager president of the Mississippi Council on Economic Education, and I am delighted that you have chosen to enroll in one of our master teacher programs. And today I'm just going to give you a brief overview of some of our expectations, some of your expectations and deadlines that we will meet and that you will need to meet. So each of you has signed up for one of our five master teacher programs, either of economics, entrepreneurship, personal finance, college and career readiness, or the brand new career readiness for special education teachers. All of those courses are 75 content hours with the exception of the MTCR, the brand new program, and it will be 40 hours of content. 
and you will be completing this over the next month or two. They are somewhat self-paced. Your instructors will talk to you about any deadlines that you must meet during the course of, of study. If you do not finish, um, I just need to remind you, if you do not finish by the published due date, then you will be charged a drop fee of $250. And we do that because we don't pay, we don't charge you to take the course which is extremely unusual, as you know, most courses that you take have a tuition fee associated with them. We have very generous sponsors that have chosen to cover your, your tuition, but um, so that you have some skin in the game and when it gets a little bit tough, you don't decide that it's not something you wanna keep doing. You just need to remember that you do have some skin in the game and that's through a drop fee of $250. Now, at the end of the course, your instructor will notify my office on who did and did not complete. Um, if you did not complete, you will immediately be charged, your debit or credit card will be charged that drop fee. If you did complete, yay, you can all do it. Um, within 30 days of the day that we are informed of your completion, you will receive from us a completion certificate continuing education units, a stipend, and uh, instructions on how to apply for an endorsement associated with the content that you completed. Now, the Master Teacher of Career Readiness, the new SPED program does not yet have an endorsement associated with it, but we are working with the Department of Education on that. If you have issues at all during the course, you're going to message your instructors via Canvas, and I'm sure they'll talk to you about that. If you need to talk to my, someone in my office, you can also um, send that message through Canvas, and we will see it, or your instructor will forward that to us. So there really won't be any need for any outside emails. Okay, so let's talk about implementation requirements. All five of the master teacher programs have implementation requirements. The master teacher of economics, you, you certified that you would have your students compete in the online econ challenge next school year. Master teacher of personal finance and college and career readiness, you have certified that you will have your students participate in the online personal finance challenge next school year and you have three three chances to do that october december and march and jessica lewis the program coordinator for mce will remind you of those opportunities i would personally recommend that you have your students participate in all three of them that increases their comfort level with the content and makes it more likely that they will advance to the state challenge where college scholarships are awarded for first and second place teams. Then uh, Master Teacher of Entrepreneurship, you are highly encouraged to participate in the Southern Entrepreneurship Program, which comes out of the University of Southern Mississippi and your instructor James Wilcox will be talking to you about that. And then lastly, Master Teacher of Career Readiness for Special Education Teachers, your implementation requirement will be somewhat flexible, but will be written into your course because we know that your students have different levels of ability. So yeah, that's those are the, the high notes, things that you need to know. You have excellent instructors for these programs. They've been working with the Mississippi Council on Econ Ed for many years, um, and we're thankful for them. Some of them are at centers for Econ Ed. Some of them are with partner organizations, such as the Federal Reserve Banks, and then some of them are hired on a contractual basis, um, and then other partner organizations, such as Get to College. So um, you are in good hands. When you finish this program, you are going to have all the tools you need to be to, to be an excellent instructor in your content area. Uh, we do require an 80% pass rate on all individual assignments. 
because this is a big deal. You will be a master teacher of the content when you finish. So we need to make sure you really are knowledgeable, but you're joining uh, a really elite group of teachers in Mississippi that can call themselves master teachers of one of our five content areas. And um, once again, we're just really pleased that you're with us this summer. I know you're going to have a great experience and um, I also look forward to being able to sign your completion certificate at the end of the program. So good luck, um, have a great time learning and we'll see you on the other side. Okay, sorry, I was muted talking to you guys. Um, that was a brief introduction from Selena. Let me, let me mention a few high points of things she mentioned about our course. Uh, as she mentioned, this is the oldest master teacher program course. Um, I'll, I'll explain this a little more later, but this, this course started out years ago as an in-person um, courses that teachers would come take. It moved online, uh, to what we call master teacher of economics 1.0 uh, online. And then maybe um, about three years ago, sometime around COVID, COVID time or shortly after, we, we revamped the course online to what we call Master Teacher of Economics 2.0. So we actually have had some teachers who come through and take this class, which is called Master Teacher of Economics 2.0, who also took the 1.0. And there are some similarities and there are some updates uh, that are pretty significant. So um, that, may be, that may be some of you guys in here. Um, she mentioned uh, the due date and what's expected. The due date for this course is July 17th. I'll say that again, July 17th uh, is the due date for the course. Um, that means you need to have this course finished at that date. I'll submit to the Mississippi Council a list of teachers who've finished. And then they'll award, the Mississippi Council awards your CEUs and your stipends. That's not something I do. So occasionally I'll get a, uh, one of you guys will ask me after the course, you know, when do I get my, um, when do I get my stipend or when do I get my CEU? Uh, that's really not my job. My job is to administer the course and then give them a list of names of people who finished the course. And then they send those things. And it take, usually takes some time after the course to receive those things. So um, I'll talk to you more about that in a second. But yeah, I'll turn in a list of names July 17th. I'll also let them know people who did not finish. And remember, there is a charge for you if you don't finish. You're charged $250 uh, if you don't finish the course. So it is, it is uh, costly uh, to not finish. There's no reason that you shouldn't finish. Everybody should finish. I'm here to help you to make sure that you get to that point. But the course is not built to like, uh, there are no roadblocks that are just so difficult that you just can't get over. There might be a test you might have to retake several times or something like that, but there's nothing uh, in the way besides probably procrastination. Uh, that is your greatest enemy for the summer. Um, so. Uh, otherwise, there's no reason everybody shouldn't finish by July 17th and get this content. Um, let me let me mention, uh, I'm looking at the chat. Does anyone have the course out of their Canvas yet? The answer is no. I have not published it because I know that y'all are like my students. As soon as I publish it, y'all will start working and ignore everything I'm saying. So my students, it's like you assign a homework assignment online. In my class, they have a laptop in there. As soon as I assign it, they start working it and forget everything else I say for the rest of class. And so I can't have that. Uh, I know that you guys would never do that, of course, but some, some, somebody out there might, and I have to protect against those things. Um, so I, I want your attention while I have it for a few minutes. I want to mention that uh, you should have received an email on Monday from Jessica Lewis. Jessica works for the Mississippi Council of Economic Education. And Jessica gave instructions on how to log into your Canvas account. I'm looking at the email on my phone here. Um, but there's a link. It had told you you should have logged in by Monday at 4.30, which almost all of you did, which is great. Um, and it has some information for your login. And so that goes back to Kelly's question. Uh, Kelly's asking, I'm logged in. I guess, Kelly, you're logged in. And she's saying she doesn't see her Canvas course yet. That's because I haven't clicked publish. As soon as I click publish at the end of this meeting, it will pop up and you'll have access but I'm going to show it to you before I publish it. Um, make sure everybody knows what's expected. But um, at the end of this orientation, I'll, I'll let everybody go 
and then ask you to hang around if you have not logged in yet to Canvas. And we'll try to make sure at the end of the day, everybody knows how to log in, what they're going to do when they log in, how to get started. And everybody's got a plan for completing the course for the summer. So if you're already logged in, you've, you've taken a big step. I'm going to show you the course. And then uh, once you feel comfortable and we wrap this orientation up, then you'll be kind of off to the races on your own for the summer. Um, but if you have not logged in, that's something you can maybe work on while I'm doing this orientation. Um, but I'm, I'm going to do my best not to let you leave today from orientation without logging in. All right. Let me check my notes here. Um, I'm going to share, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and show you guys the course. Let's see. One second. Are there materials? Um, I'm looking at questions. I'm not catching all the questions here. I'm sorry. All right. If you haven't received an email from Jessica, let's talk about that personally later at the end of the orientation. Are there books or materials? Jessica has emailed you. I mean, not emailed you. Mailed you. You know, the traditional way of mailing. Jessica has mailed you a what's called a uh, BE drive. Letter B, letter E. Um, is a jump drive that you'll use in the middle of the course. So there, there is that. There is no textbook or anything else. The materials are all built into the course. Um, so good question. Uh, somebody asked, what time on July 17th? See, I, I have procrastinated and haven't looked at the time. Let me look. July 17th, so Wednesday. We'll do midnight on Wednesday, 11.59 p.m. So by the end of the day. All right. So um, hopefully uh, you, you've not received the jump drive because they just went out in the mail this week. All right. So I'll come back to, to chat and look at questions in a little while. Let me get started with this course. Can everybody see my screen? Okay, great. So this is what your Master Teacher of Economics 2.0 course looks like when you start. You'll have, this is the landing page. And so you can see here's the state curriculum, which will just take you to the economic standards. This course is built around the standards for the state of Mississippi. This is not just the material I wanted to put in the course. I actually, I actually built this course. Um, so I, I built it and I will be teaching it for the summer. Uh, but it's not just me choosing what I want to teach. This is uh, built around the standards, as you might expect. And obviously, it's meant for you guys to be able to take uh, the content you're learning and go teach to those standards in your classroom. Um, what you'll see is the class is broken up in modules. I'm going to zoom out a bit. And you see there's 16 numerical modules, I guess 17 if you count zero. Zero is like an introduction. And then there are three letter modules, A, B, and C. Okay. And we'll get to that later. All right. But the first thing I want to show you before we jump into that is, you, and your screen will look a little different than mine uh, because you'll be seeing, I'll, I'll click here and show you. You'll be seeing what's called the student view. So the big change is you don't have, you don't have as many options on this left hand bar. All right. But one of the options that you do have, if you click people, is you'll be able to see who's in the course. And importantly, you'll see there's there's me, Brandon Bolin. You see it says instructor, okay? So that's me. And then there's one more instructor in the class. If you scroll down, see this, how it says instructor right here? Jessica Lewis. Jessica works for the Mississippi Council. So we're, we're the two instructors in the course, but we have distinct jobs. I want you all to make a note of this in your mind. I teach the content, economics content of the course. If something's wrong in the course, or you can't figure out a question in the course, or you have a question about economics, or um, you fail the test and you need it reset so you can redo, you have retry. All right, you email me. If you have questions for Mississippi Council, when do I get my CEUs? Um, when do I get my stipend? Um, how can I sign up for other Mississippi Council courses, master teacher courses? Anything related to Mississippi Council that's not economics related goes to Jessica. So Jessica works for the Mississippi Council. I do not. I'm just hired to teach this course. I mean, I work for them, but not uh, full time. Jessica works for them full time. You should be able to click like on Jessica's name and click send a message over here. OK, so that's how you'll contact. Selena mentioned that in the video. If you have questions from Mississippi Council, you would message Jessica. Now, don't ask Jessica for help with the test or anything like that. Jessica's job is not to teach the course. Jessica's job is to administer like the administrative stuff for Mississippi Council of Economic Education. Everybody good on that? All right. And then for you can do the same thing with me in the course. If you have a question, you just click my name. And all I did was click people over here, click my name, and you can hit send a message. And you can message me through Canvas. All right. 
So if you're new to Canvas, that's how you would send a message. And I just want to make sure everybody knows who to contact for what purpose. So contact me for economics and course related stuff. Contact Jessica if you have something for Mississippi Council. All right. But you all should know your, your CEUs and your stipends and some of those questions, those are the most common questions we get. Those will come after the entire, so some of y'all might finish this course in two or three weeks. That's great. All right. We do have teachers that kind of just run through it really quickly. Um, but you won't get your stipend until the course is completed. The full list of names is submitted and then it'll be a few weeks after that. So just because you finished in two weeks doesn't mean you're gonna get a stipend or see you, you know, or any, any certificates or anything uh, sooner. It's still gonna be it towards the end. All right, that's probably the most common question I get for Mississippi Council. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to answer that to save y'all a message to Jessica. All right, but like I mentioned, this is kind of the landing page of the course. And I think this course is laid out in a way that's gonna be very easy for you to know what to do, all right? But what you can do is you can simply just click module A to get started, or you can click this button up here that says modules. All right. Either way. So once you go to modules, you're going to, you'll see these are the modules. Here's module A, there's module zero, module one, and so forth. And it, you'll see it goes all the way down and everything's kind of in order. You have to move in order of this class. There's no jumping around. It's a very, uh, you know, you, you have to complete one assignment to move to the next and so forth. There are 16 total modules plus a few extras. So it's, um, and I'll explain what those extras are. So actually it's close to 20 total with all the extras. But you'll notice that every module except for the first one is, is kind of blurred out. All right, y'all see that? So what the reason it's blurred out right now is I'm in student mode. Um, and so this student, this is a test student, this student hasn't done anything yet in the class. You know, I haven't completed any assignments. So like I said, in this class, you have to go in order, okay? So you'll just start at the top and you can see actually, if you see these, uh, and I'll zoom in a bit so I don't test your eyesight, but um, you can see underneath some of these things, they have like a little instruction. You get to mark this as done. You get to mark this as done. You get to contribute to this. And you see these little dots over here to the right. Those are telling you, these are, these are things you have to do before you can move forward, right? So what you would do is, uh, th the reason this one doesn't have anything is these are the two videos I just showed you. We just watched those two. So you don't, I'm not, it's not required to go watch them again. All right. But if you just get in the habit of hitting this next button, you'll see here's another video. It's a minute and a half. It's me. All right. You'll watch the video. You'll click mark done. Just like that. All right. And you'll click next. Here's two reading, uh, quick reading assignment. So you click on the reading assignment, it'll pop up right here on the screen. You'll read this assignment. You'll read the next assignment. And then you'll go down here and click mark is done. Y'all see, you just work through it. And you have, to, you have to work through these things in order and you have to finish them all before you can go to the next module. Now there's a couple short videos and it always tells you how long they are. You know, So you can watch these two videos. You just click, it's gonna pop out. And you click this one, it'll pop out and you'll watch it. And then you'll be able to click mark is done. Yes, you can always go back. Uh, somebody asked that question. You can always go back, reread materials, but you have to mark them as done to keep going forward, right? And so what you'll see is I'm just clicking next. Um, this is saying, uh, this is requiring me to reply. To, I have to reply to this before I can go. You'll see, um, let me go back to the modules. If I click back at modules, what you'll see, you see how there's check marks now? That's because I completed those, right? And I can see where I left off. Okay, I'm right here on this discussion forum. What I need to do to, this is to complete the discussion forum, I need to contribute. I have to reply to the discussion prompt, right? So as soon as you reply and hit done, you know, post. So these, I just need to mark them done. This one, I actually need to contribute to the discussion forum to complete that. And then I'll get a check mark, all right? So I'm not actually going to post to do that right now because, well, I'll, I'll just kind of post up. So you'll post something and I will be reading these. And if, technically you only have to write a little bit, but I do want you to answer them thoroughly. If I go in there and I see, okay, somebody's just posting a, a one sentence answers, not giving this class much effort. I'm going to ask you to go back and redo it. But if you post anything, it will let you go forward, at least temporarily. Now, when I go read it and, I, and if I see that, hey, I, don't, I really don't think this person's given the effort 
or the energy that this class really needs for them to be successful, I'm going to ask you to redo, the, redo that assignment. All right, so there's no word length requirement or anything. Just be thoughtful and give it the, give it the energy that um, it deserves. Do what you at least expect of your students. You expect them to give you the respect and respect the subject matter enough to give it their best effort, you know, uh, an appropriate effort. So I'm just going to put test here. You'll see it post test student said test. And then I can click next, All right? On this one, I just view, this is just information about your instructor, which is me. Um, you click next. All right. So that's the way you'll work through these modules. And so what you'll see now, this test student has completed module A, and now module zero has opened. Y'all see that? Now that module zero has opened, I can go to the first part of module zero. There's a video, I'll mark it as done. And all this stuff is really just introductory, the first two modules, right? You'll see it's just kind of like post on the forum. You know, you're not really, there's not a ton to do. Um, and of course, they just answered that question one more time. I can always go back to these videos, even though I've passed them. I can just go to the modules and click back on that video if I want to re-review it, right? So you can go always go backwards, but you can't go forwards until you've done everything you're supposed to do. Um, so you will just kind of slowly work through the course. When you get to the end of the course, you'll be done. Like, how do you know if you're done? Well, if you made it to module, you know, you get all the way down to the bottom of the course, you get down here to module C and you submit everything in module C, you're done, All right? How do you know if you skip something? Well, if you skip something, you shouldn't be at module C. You should be blocked. It'll block you. Does that make sense? So like, it's not gonna let you get to module C if you don't complete module 16 and you don't get to module 16 if you don't complete module 15 and so forth, all right? So everybody should be really clear of, did I complete the course appropriately or did I not? All right, because the course is built to restrict you from going forward until you've done what you're supposed to do. Now, the only exception to that would be if, if you're doing something like submitting discussion forum responses that are not appropriate, like um, not giving me the appropriate amount of effort or thoughtfulness. And I'm not talking about, I'm not going to grade it so much for this is right, this is wrong, this is, I disagree with that or this. It's more, are you giving me thoughtful replies? Are you giving me the efforts that are respectful of the course and respectful of, you know, my time as a teacher and respectful of the fact that you're going to turn around and teach your students and are you giving it the time that we want to give our kids like we're we investing in ourselves enough so we know that we can do right by our kids by our students in our classrooms right that's my expectation just be thoughtful and give it your time so everybody should be clear by july 17th have i completed a course or not well if you've come down through module c and completed everything then you've completed the course all right if you have not then you have not completed the course so it shouldn't be any uh you shouldn't have to worry did I miss an assignment? You know, did I skip a quiz? You know, you shouldn't have to worry about that. Okay. So that's the way the process would work. You'll jump in this course. You'll start at the top. You'll work. You'll do whatever it requires of you. It says, what, read this, Mark Dunn. Watch this, Mark Dunn. Contribute to this discussion forum. You know, take this quiz. And just so I don't have to keep walking through all this step by step, I'm going to leave student view and go to my view. You'll see in my view, it's a little busier over here on the side. Um, but in my view, everything's unlocked. So I can show you some different things that you'll get to. Um, what? Let me, let me say this about the course. The course is laid out in two different types of modules. Some that are called by a letter. So you see, this is called module A. All right. And some modules have a number, module zero, module one, module two. All right, and, and that, that, that reminds me, I need to explain something to you guys. So the, the intent of this course is we have what's called a teacher-facing course where we administer this course to high school teachers like you guys in the summer. That's what we're doing right now. You're, you're going to take the teacher-facing course. But we also have what we call a student-facing course, which is we want you, after you complete this course, to be able to take all the material into your classroom and you can have all our quizzes, all our practice problems, all our tests, whatever. You take all the, the PowerPoint slides called Nearpods. We'll get to that in a second. You can take all the materials and turn around and just administer the same course in your own classroom. But there are some assignments that are unique to you guys. Like um, module A, module B, which is in the middle of the course at, right here. And then module C, which is at the end, those are teacher-facing modules only. T 
teacher facing modules only. What's that mean? It means that's content that I expect you guys to read. I expect assignments that I expect you guys to do, but probably not something I would assign to a high school senior or a high school sophomore. It's probably not something I would take into my classroom. Does that make sense? So the, in, uh, and we'll come to these in a second, but some of this is, this, these modules are, are what we call teacher facing modules. They're not in the student facing course. So at the end of the course, you'll have an opportunity to download. a. So how many of you guys use Canvas in your classroom at your school? Anybody? Some of you guys, okay. So those of you who use Canvas can literally download the Canvas course, import it into your Canvas and turn around and have the course is yours. You know, administer it to your students. Some of you guys who are on Google Classroom or different different uh, uh, platforms will have to do some, you know, some work to move stuff over. But we'll give some instructions on how to do that. But we want all of you guys to be able to take all these materials and go into your classroom and use them. You know, so it's not just meant to give you a class for the summer. It's meant to give you material to turn around and take into your classroom. And so that's why you'll see some modules that are called module A, B, and C. Those are teacher facing modules. And then modules zero through 16 are what we call the student course. So you guys will take the student course plus some teacher facing content. Does that make sense? You'll be basically taking the same course I would assign to a group of high school seniors, modules zero through 16. And then you're taking the content that I'm assigning to you guys that's unique to teachers. All right. So that's why we have what we call modules. And you, you can see that in the homepage. The homepage has module A and then has the numbers that are kind of a different color. Module B, that's telling you, hey, this is a little different. This is teacher resources. You know, I wouldn't give this to my students. They're not teachers. They don't need teacher resources, All right? And then module C, teacher wrap up. But modules zero through 16 go to the students. You know, so that's just student, student content. All right, so that's how the course is built, laid out, and designed. Um, so that hopefully help you understand it. But let me show you. So once you kind of go through the introductory modules, You'll see it, most of it's introduce yourself, uh, view the syllabus, view this stuff. There is a pretest here you have to take. It's just going to give you 45 questions, I think, of economic questions to see where you stand before the course starts. Pretest. All right. You don't have to score a certain score on that. You just got to take it. See how it just says submit? Just submit it. You know, take it, submit it, do your best. But you don't have to score a certain amount to pass it. But then when you get into module one is when you really kind of hit a routine. And what you'll see, module one through 16 are designed almost exactly the same every time. When you get module one, every, every module will start with a video, just kind of introducing the module. So it's like usually short videos, minute, minute and a half, two minutes. This will tell you what we're going to learn in module one. All right. And some of you guys will go through this differently. You can either just click next. and It'll take, take you to the next thing. Or you can go back to the, let's see. You can go back to the module page and click the next thing. You can click next, or you can just go back to the list and click the next thing on the list, whatever. And then after, uh, after the first video, the short introductory video, there's a section called read. And I want you guys to all see this because I'm not, some of y'all might not be familiar with this. But read has a tab that says required reading. This is what's required of you. And then obviously the optional reading, there's some textbook uh, readings here that I don't expect you to have to read. But if you wanted to go back and have a text, so, you know, one of you guys asked, is there a textbook for this class? No, there's not uh, like one we're going to send you in the mail, but there is a free, this is all a free online textbook that we use to design the class. And I pulled the content from that textbook into the Canvas course. So when you go to your classroom, if you want to use this course, this could be kind of like your textbook. You know, this, this material that I'm pulling in works like it, it is your, you know, you can help you prepare for your classroom. Uh, it can also be something you assign to your students maybe to read, um, but there's, you would, I don't know why it's struggling to load, but you would uh, work through these, these uh, readings. But the required reading actually every time is just a Nearpod. Is anybody familiar with Nearpod? Nearpod is basically a fancy PowerPoint, All right? But what Nearpod does, and I'm just going to, you know, you'll, you'll just join the lesson like this. And what Nearpod is, it's just going to walk you through the PowerPoint slides that I, if I was in a classroom, if I was walking in a classroom on a Monday morning, starting an economics course, and I was wondering, I remember my first day teaching, I remember thinking like a week before, what am I going to say? Like, what do I do? You know, like, how, how, I'm like, 
I studied economics. I know economics, but how do I start teaching other people economics? You know, like I, I got to come up with lecture material, you know, start teaching. I come up with assignments. And basically this is kind of like PowerPoint slides. You know, if I walked into class, this is how I would start. Um, one of the things Nearpod does is it requires you to, to participate. So your students, you could actually lecture on a, a screen in your classroom and open Nearpod and they, they would all be on their devices answering questions as you go. So Nearpod's really cool, but it also allows this asynchronous approach, like what we're doing here, where you guys will go through this at your own speed. You just work through the Nearpod sl slides. So what is economics? You type in your definition. What do you think economics is? You know, and I'm just going to put test. And I'm going to hit submit. I can't go forward until I submit my answer. And then I give my definition. All right. And you'll flip through. And this gives you some notes for a teacher. If I'm teaching this, here's something I would make sure I would discuss with my students. Economics is this, but it's not that. Does that make sense? There's some notes for the teachers. You just read through this, like, you know, and think about how would I teach my students this? You could take these slides into your classroom and use them to teach, right? Um, and these are just, like I said, PowerPoint slides you would read through, think through. And then there's a quiz question that will pop up. You have to answer the quiz question, you guys, for the summer. And you can make it where if you use these in your classroom, your students would have to answer the quiz question. You know, which of the following is an example of a resource categorized as capital? And so we choose an answer, we'd submit it. All right, we got it right. We'd move forward, right? So there's little things going to ask you to participate along the way. You can draw, circle an answer. All right. And you'll see it's just, it's called a read section and you are going to read, but it's, it's slides. And why is it slides? Because it gives you content that you can read, but also content you can turn around and deliver. It's in, a, it's in a format you can deliver it to somebody else, all right? And that's the goal is at the end of the course, not just for you to have read a bunch of stuff, but for you to have content you can turn around, you can download all these slides and turn around and use them in your classroom, you know? In worst case scenario, if I'm teaching an economics class for the first time, I don't know what to say. I could just start by reading off the slides and having conversations with my students. Um, and so it's a start. All right, so you'll go through all this, you'll you'll finish. I have a Nearpod account, so I can see when you finish, you have to go through every slide, you have to submit every quiz, or it has like a quiz question and ask you to draw something or it asks you to answer a free response. You just finish the Nearpod slides and then you can move on to the next thing, all right? So that's the read section. Read section every time is gonna be a Nearpod, a Nearpod presentation you'll read. Then you'll go to watch and listen. And we, we're not going to walk through every module, obviously, but you'll have a series of videos you need to watch and listen. Some of them are audio recordings. Some of them are videos. And you'll you'll watch each of these. And you'll go to the next. Um, do we have a Nearpod account? It should pop up for you in Canvas. So you, you just type in your name and just go with it. Uh, somebody just asked, do I have to have a Nearpod account? When you log into Canvas, you'll just, it'll, just like it just asked me for my name. And hold on, let me get out of this. Just like it just asked me for my name and it just let me get started, it'll do the same thing for you. You'll type in your name, you know, type in your name so I'll recognize it so I can see who's complete and who hasn't and um, then work your way through. I clicked the wrong button there. Um, so yeah, good question. So you'll watch and listen. You can see underneath, all I gotta do is watch and listen. Market is done. Of course, I can see on the back end, did you actually watch all the way through? Did you actually read all the way through? You know, uh, and I'll, I'll be checking that. You'll watch and listen, Mark done, and then you'll get into assignments. And every one of these assignments, it tells you what minimum score you have to have. Like this one, I got to have a 100 to pass, but you get unlimited attempts. So just keep taking it. Like you, I'm not letting you go past till you get every question right. And it's only like five questions. And if you miss it, figure out which one you missed and go fix it and retake it, you know? So it should be pretty straightforward. You get unlimited attempts. On these, you just got to make an 80. You see it says score at least an 80. You have to score an 80 before you can go forward. You have unlimited attempts. This is a discussion forum. All you got to do is contribute. And then here's a quiz that you have to score an 80. All right. So the, the modules are laid out basically the same all the way through. You have something that a little video to watch. You got to read something. You got to watch some videos. You got to practice. You got to work some assignments. And you take a little quiz at the end. All the way through. The only exception is a Kate, you have six tests spread throughout the test class six tests and you see here so at module two at the end of module two there's a test so you see module two is the same there's a short video read watch and listen practice 
some assignments, discussion forum, a quiz. But then at the end of module two, there's a test. So every, every, every so often you'll have a test. Now, every time there's a test, you know, open this here. Every time there's a test, let me preview this assignment for you. Let's see, preview. Every time there's a test, there's a review assignment before the test. Now look, you have to make an 80 on the test. You have unlimited attempts on the quizzes, on the assignments, but you do not have unlimited assignment, uh, attempts on the test. What You have two attempts initially, okay? Two attempts. If you e After those two attempts, if you fail, if you don't make an 80, you have to email me on Canvas and say, Dr. Boland, I did not make an 80 on test two, on test and module two, test one, module two. Can you reset it? I'm going to go look at your attempts. And I'm going to say, oh, well, you know, she had a 78 and a 75. She's really close. Let me see what she's missing. I might give you some information to kind of clean up your misunderstanding. And then I'll reset it for you and let you retry again. But you're at least going to have to have a conversation with me. Look, I've failed it twice or I haven't made an 80 twice. And I, need, I, want to, I want you to pause long enough so we can figure out if there's something you're misunderstanding. Does that make sense? So you are going to get to keep moving forward. It just If you fail it twice, you're not out of the course. But you are going to have to email me to get it unlocked so we can I can at least look and see what's going on. Like what, what, what content are we misunderstanding? All right. But nobody should be repetitively failing tests if they're giving this class the time they, that it deserves. And here's why. If you look at this, before every test, and I just showed... There's a practice and review, right? And you have to take it and make an 80 on the practice and review. And what you'll see on the practice and review, when you open it, it'll look like this, all right? And it's going to have questions. If you read the instructions and you download this document, this document's a review document, all right? So here's some terms and concepts you need to know. So you can download that and then... Watch this video. If you click this video, what you'll see, and I'm, I'm going to play it just for a second. Um, it's not going to share the sound, but this is a 40 minute video. That seems long, but what I'm going to do is all it is is me. Let's see. Hold on. I'm on computer. Let's see. Now, scarcity is a very important all right. term. So, this is me working through basically me giving you a review before your test. So some of y'all might get to the test and feel like, I already know this. I don't need Dr. Okay. Bowling's review, Term is right? I'm going to walk you through some vocabulary you need to know. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to walk you through every problem on the review video. So if you, if you watch this video and you go back uh, he, let's see, here, you'll see, I'm just going to work every problem on this review. I'm going to spend 40 minutes going through all the terms that you should know by now. All the all the uh, all the questions that are on the review, I'm going to walk through every question, and I'm going to make sure. Hey, uh, this is how you read. This is called a production possibility possibilities frontier, right? Um, this is how you work uh, comparative advantage questions. Like I'm going to walk you through it in the video, and then on the test, I want y'all to look at this last question. This is the this is the practice and review now for a test. It says this, the questions on this quiz are similar, but not identical to the questions that appear on the test. The questions on this test might look the same as these questions, but they are not the same. Subtle changes have been made. This is not meant to trick you, but instead to give you practice problems that are very similar, but not identical to the test. Carefully work through each problem on the test. and You'll click, I understand. All right. So in other words, I've, I'm going to give you, I'm giving you 12 questions on this practice problem video, plus some vocabulary review, where I'm giving you questions that are going to be very similar to what you're about to take on the test, All right? Not identical, but very similar, so that once you complete this assignment, if you watch that video and give it the time it deserves, when you go back and you go to take this test, none of those questions should, should surprise you as far as what they're asking you, All right? You should be able to do all those, okay? So every test has a review video before it. I highly recommend you watch it. I mean, it's really required to watch it and take the review, but I highly recommend that you give it the time it deserves. There's a way that you can just kind of try to get an 80 on that and move forward. But 
not give it the time it deserves. Then you fail the test and you have to go through all this time waiting on me to reset it. By the way, when you had to email me, I, you know, I, I'm going to try to respond within 24 hours. That's my rule. A lot of times it'll be the same day if it's during the day. Uh, on the weekend, it might be a little longer. But one of the problems is it slows you down. You know, you're going to have to wait for me to re reset it. You don't want to fail the test and have to slow down. You, you, maybe you block off a Saturday. I'm working on my course all day Saturday. You get to the test, you fail the test. And I don't have, I'm not at my computer. You're going to get slowed down. You understand? Because I might not be able to reset it till Monday. So you've blocked off the whole Saturday and now you can't go forward. All right. But here's what I run across. I just want to, I want to, you know, like I said earlier, I've learned through the years that teachers are a lot like students. All right. I'll have, a, I'll have one of my teachers in the summer that will fail the class, fail the test twice and email me and say, Dr. Bellin, will you reset the test? I failed it twice. And I'll go in and pull up their account and I'll see that they spent about 30 seconds on this review. They just, they just punched in answers and they passed, right? And they did not, I can tell, I can see on my side, they did not give the review any time, all right? And I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna tell you, when you go in and do that review and actually spend some time on that assignment, and then I'll reset the test. Because there's no reason that you should be taking the test three, four, five times when you could just spend an extra 30, 45 minutes getting ready for the test and you just finish it, right? It's, it's uh, you know, um, it's just you're not giving the, that assignment the attention it, it needs. Does that make sense? So just know that if you email me and say, I need you to reset my test, just know that I'm the first thing I'm going to do is check and see how much time you spent on that review. And if you didn't spend time on the review actually getting ready for the test and you failed it, then we're going to have to actually have a conversation about you need to go spend more time on the review. You're, you're just kind of trying to, you're trying to get through the course without actually doing, you know, giving it the time it deserves. Right. Um, and I just want you to be aware. I'm going to, that's the first thing I'm going to check. So all that to say, even if you feel pretty confident about the test material, give this review time. If you take the test the first time and make a 70, you don't get the 80, you can't pass. Right. Don't just take it again. Go watch the review video before you take it again. Does that make sense? Uh, then, then go take it again. Because once you felt that second time, like like I said, if you blocked off a day to work on it, you felt that second time, it's not going to let you retake it till I go manually reset it. And that's going to take time. It's going to slow you down. Okay. So don't, don't get to that point. All right. But so every, every module, and I'm not going to go through every module, we're going to stop here, but you'll read, watch, listen, practice, do assignments, discussion forums, quizzes, and then periodically you'll have tests. You have a test module two, you have a test in module six, you have a test in module nine. So you have three tests on the front half of the class, then you have three tests on the back half of the class, six total. All right. But all the modules are laid out just like I just walked through. So I'm going to pause for a second and give you all a chance. Does anybody have a question? I've seen some on the chats. Um, any, any other questions? I have a question that didn't get aimed at me. Was that when will we be receiving more info about the competition thing our students have to participate in? Yeah, that's a good question. So by agreeing to take this course, you agree to participate in the Mississippi, the online economics challenge. And I think that happens three times a year. I know the video Selena mentioned, it was like October, January, and March or something like that. But that was an older video she recorded. I don't know if it's the exact same times this year, but it should be roughly be like maybe one in the fall, one in the winter, one in the spring. Um, and Jessica Lewis will be following up by email to remind you to sign up. So it, that'll be something like after the course is done, when that time comes around, she'll remind you, hey, you, you agreed to sign up for this competition. It's time to sign up. And I think you agreed to do it at least once next year, but there are three offerings um, and they encourage you to do all three. And I do think it's fun for the students. You can get on YouTube and um, let me see. Uh, like I was watching a friend of mine sent me the other day, they were doing the national economics competition. So there's a Mississippi Council on Economic Education and they had this competition. And if you do well enough, uh, on the online one, you advance to the statewide competition. So, you you know, and we have teachers that I've had a teacher come through here, her, her class advanced, you know, several times. And then it makes statewide competition. You win that, you go to the national competition and there's scholarship money for your students involved. And so it's really a cool thing. And so the national competition was going on this week. And I don't think there were any Mississippi teams in it, but um, a friend of mine emailed it to me. I was watching it briefly. 
it was they were playing it on YouTube and they have these students with a white put with a white marker board and they're answering questions and so all that all that but initially it starts as an as a online thing um is there a minimum or maximum amount of students in the class I don't know about that uh whether there's a certain number of students have to participate the economics challenges for students um in economics classes um I would think so. You would need to be in economics class to be successful, probably to do well. But I don't think, you know, if you're not in a full uh, actual economics class, you just have a class with some economics content. I think it would be hard to do really well in the competition uh, if other students are getting more economics content than you. But I think they want y'all to participate regardless. Uh, I'm not positive about that. But I think everybody here has agreed to participate and they expect you, they want you to participate. Um, and so I actually don't, I personally don't work with those competitions. So I'm not the expert on that. Um, I do this class and part of your agreement in this class is to participate in those. But when that time of year rolls around, I don't actually participate in those personally. So I'm not positive. Yes, those are all Jessica questions. Um, if, if as far as like what, what you're required to do, um, those would be uh, questions for Jessica. Do you know the general concept of the competition? Well, I guess the original competition is online. So I think it would be something that you would do like some type of online uh, participation in some way. I'm really not sure. I do know that eventually the, the, the competitions look more like a quiz bowl format where they have students in a room and they answer, you know, they, they have a team of students that sit around a table and they work, throughout, work out problems and they answer it in a competition. And that's where you have an opportunity to win scholarships and stuff like that. Um, but initially, I think it's an online thing that your students participate in. And and actually, I'll just, um, let's see. Let me show you. Um, so here's Mississippi Council's YouTube page. If you look on here, uh, let's see, I'm missing it somewhere. Mississippi Economics Challenge. So this is the this is not the online one. This is the, this is the one that I think yes you qualify for. So you see how the students are based on their schools. You have groups of four and they're spread out and they'll answer questions. That it looks like they have little whiteboards. Um, this is in Jackson. There's Selena. Let's see. Um, So eventually it looks like this, but initially it's online and not everybody qualifies for this. You see, there's just, uh, you know, 12 teams here or something. So that's eventually what it will look like. And the national competition looks something similar, but um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's what it's moving towards. But initially it starts as an online thing that you guys have agreed to participate in. And I guess what you would, I think what you agreed is your students will participate. And, you know, like I said, if you're, if you're teaching a, a class that's not doesn't cover all the economics content, which is true for some of y'all or even a lot of y'all. Maybe it will be harder for your students to do really well there. That doesn't mean you shouldn't participate. You know, they they should all participate in the in the event. And you might have some students who've had economics elsewhere, maybe before they got to your course and they do well or whatever. So that's really not my expertise here. Um, I think I don't know that question, Eva. Is it for middle school or in high school? I think it's for everybody. So I don't think it's limited to just high school. But some of these questions, I need, I'll need to get some more information for you guys from Jessica. Maybe I can get like a, I'm sure she has like a flyer or something like some information. I can go ahead and post to the course and I'll put some information about it in the course. So you guys will have that. How about that? I'll, I'll, I'll do the research to get you more information. But Jessica will reach out to you. So um, let's see. So back to the course, just real quick. That's a good question. I appreciate you asking it. Um, you'll work through every module as you go. Like I said, there's six tests. The other big thing that you need to be aware of in the course is in module B and in module C, there is a writing assignment. All right, so you see the midterm essay. Remember module B and C, those are the teacher facing modules. Would I make my students write these essays? Mm. Depends where I am and what type of students I'm teaching. If I'm teaching an advanced placement class with talented, gifted students, you know, I might ask them to write on their test or write, do an essay or submit a paper or something like that. Uh, you know, it just depends. You, you know your students, okay? 
But for you guys, I had this in the teacher facing resources. You guys have to do a midterm essay. Now let's look at the midterm essay together. Yeah. Canvas switched over to a new quiz format and it's more complicated these days. Um, okay, here's the midterm essay. It says, for this essay question, use your MTE materials, but no other resources of people. This is not a test of your cleverness. Repeat, not a test of your cleverness. Just give the best answer you can give using the course materials and the correct terminology. In other words, I'm not asking you to be a creative writer here. I'm actually gonna ask you a question, here it is in bold. And then I'm gonna give you a suggested outline for your response, including terms that you should use along the way. I'm not asking you to be super clever or creative. I'm asking you to take this outline and take this question that's up here in bold, which you will be able to answer by the time, if you don't feel confident answer, answering it now, you will be able to answer it by the middle of the course and just follow this outline and write an essay, right? Um, and so I'm kind of building your essay structure for you. You'll just kind of build the essay from there, right? So everybody's essay is gonna look pretty similar in structure because you're gonna follow this outline, okay? Uh, so it, it's, I know anytime you assign people a writing assignment, students or adults, they freeze up and think, oh no, I have to write for the most part. And, but this should be pretty straightforward, right? Why are we assigning essay, like this essay question? Why is this class built this way? Because at some point in the learning process, you have to take all the vocabulary words that you're learning and the concepts that you're learning, and you have to be able to mesh them together and tell a cohesive story. Like, how does this fit with that and that and that, right? So we want to be able to tell a cohesive story, and the essay is one way that I can see, are you guys learning this in such a way that you can, you can tell a cohesive story? Uh, it's making you synthesize that information, okay? So that is uh, that is the midterm essay. And the final essay is in module C, and it's kind of the same, same idea. Let's see. The final essay um, actually has two questions. Here's a question, here's an outline, and then here's a question, and here's an outline. Um, so here you'll have uh, two response, two shorter essays, maybe, uh, when you'll follow these outlines. So you'll when you get to this, this part of the course, you'll you'll uh, you'll be prepared to answer these questions. Um, you don't need to cite your sources or write anything. This is actually, I say an essay, I mean, it's not a paper. So you're just gonna write, start writing in this box, you know? So you might write it in Microsoft Word or somewhere else and then paste it in there, you know? But you're just gonna write in this box and follow this outline and answer the question. And I'm gonna have to come grade these. Uh, so it is one of those things where once you submit that essay, you might be stuck for a while until you get a grade. And you're either gonna get a 100 or a zero. It's, it's, it's basically pass fail, you know, like, is it good enough? 100. Is it not? You got a zero and I'll tell you, go correct this, this, and this. You'll correct it. You'll resubmit it and your grade will go from a zero to 100, right? So it's just, once you submit it the first time, I'll tell you, hey, this, this is not, uh, you missed, you missed, use this term or you forgot this topic and I'll give you a zero initially. That means that nothing was good. It just means you didn't pass the first time. I'll tell you what to re what to redo or where to where to make changes. You'll resubmit once you've made those changes. I'll check, make sure you made the appropriate changes. You'll get a 100, you'll move forward. But it is something that will make you stop in the course. So if I'm on a Saturday afternoon, I submit my essay. I'm probably not grading it on Saturday afternoons, right? Um, occasionally I'll grade on the weekends, but you shouldn't count on me be grading it like that. Um, and until I grade it, you can't move forward. So there are at least module B, that module in the middle, there is kind of a stopping point. It's going to make you pause until you get a grade from me, All right? Everything else, you can move at your own speed as long as you're passing the test, passing the assignments. Nothing should stop you until you get to module B. It's going to say, hey, wait, you got to wait on your grade, All right? All right, so I know uh, all this feels like a lot of different things. So I'm covering, you know, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the material, but really, you know, it's going to be, as far as you understanding what you're going to do, well, open the course, start at the top, just do what it tells you to do, work your way down. Um, for the most part, 
I don't think you're going to have any problems knowing what to do, having the resources to be successful. The class is built to take 75 hours total. I don't think it will take some of you 75 hours. Some of y'all take half that. Some of y'all, it might take more than that if you're failing a lot of the tests the first time and having to retake them. But for the most part, you know, like I said, I have some people that finish in seven or 10 days. And I have some people that finish the very last minute. And I have some people don't finish. Uh, but it's usually because they just didn't. Uh, the, my, I very, rare, very, very rarely have a, have, uh, a student. Uh, and it feels weird to call a bunch of teachers students. It feels backwards. But I very rarely have a student in this course um, who doesn't finish but gave it, but tried to. Meaning like I, I was working on it from day one. I know I went on vacation that one week. That's fine. But I, I was working on it pretty diligently and I just didn't get around to finishing. That's pretty rare. Uh, the, the people who don't finish are the ones that just don't get around to getting started until it's four or five weeks in. And then they kind of uh, struggle through some of the tests, whatever. They just don't give it much time. So as long as you like set it, set it in your mind, I'm going to start working on this like this week. And oh, I have a beach trip in two weeks. That's okay. Just plan ahead. Get some stuff done before you go. Pick back up where you left off when you get back. Make plan to get it finished. Um, Everybody should know where to start, what to do, and um, have all the materials they need to be successful here. Okay. So, like I said, yeah, the modules are all kind of the same. Then you have modules A, B, and or you have modules B and C that have an essay in them. And then one thing in module C that you'll see at the end is once you finish all the course materials, there's some there are some videos to help you understand how can I take these materials into my own classroom. Like how can I take this, this class, all these quizzes, all these tests, these Nearpod slides, all this stuff, how can I take it and use it? So that, that information is kind of built on the back end to try to help you understand once you finish, how can I take this stuff into my classroom? Um, let me check my notes here and see what else we need to talk about. Let me pause for a second. Are there questions? Any more questions? Um, what if your school does not use Canvas? Then how can we still use the information that you guys gave us? Yeah, good question. Um, so I'm going to open this video. This, well, let's see. So one of the things you'll be asked to do is you'll ask to uh, you'll be asked to fill out a form to adopt the course, and they'll tell you you know so that's why you get the material. Um, here it is, video recording. So this is a video recording from Zoom from a previous semester where we spend some time just walking Maybe through. I'll talk to you a little bit about the content. Where it's, it's me and then there's uh, somebody else involved. Uh, her name is Gabby. And Gabby is talking about how do I, how do you adopt these courses? And you'll see she'll go through. I'm trying to skip around until we can find it here. Uh, well, she'll go through, like, how do I take this into Google Classroom? How do I take this into um, whatever the other platforms are you guys are using? What are you using? Um, we have Google Classroom. Okay. Yeah, she'll talk to you about how to take it in Google Classroom. This video will walk you through some of that. There is a little more work if you're not in Canvas, but you know, you know Canvas has a free... Um, you can get a free account on Canvas even if your uh, your school doesn't use Canvas. I can set up a free account on Canvas that just belongs to me. It's not associated with any school. I can pull all this material into my Canvas course, and then I can kind of like download that quiz and move it over. So it's kind of we actually recommend that because you know teachers change schools over time. So if I, if my school's at, in Canvas, I'm using Canvas and I have all my material in my school. And for some reason, I, I change jobs and somebody doesn't have Canvas and I lose my material, I lose my class. You know, it's a good thing to have a free Canvas account just personally and store a lot of your materials there, your courses there, so that if you ever change class, change schools, you can change and take this with, with you. But that's a great question. It uh, As far as how do I adopt this material if I use Schoology or if I use uh, Google Classroom or something else? And Gabby, will, Gabby and I in the video at the end walk you through how to do that. And so it is a little bit more uh, work. Um, 
the drive that's coming in the mail does not have this course on it. The drive has some different resources on it. But this course will be something you can go back and access in the future. Somebody asked in the chat, um, if I don't teach economics now, but want to teach it down the road, uh, can I come back and get these materials? Yes, you should download the materials, put them in a Canvas course, or you should be able to come back and access this course at a later date and download them. Uh, but you will be able to go back and access these materials. And you know the Mississippi Council is here to help you. So for some reason, uh, two years from now, you start teaching economics, you realize, man, I need that material. And just reach out. If you can't remember how to get it, reach out. Uh, Jessica Lewis or somebody will help you make sure you get the material. You know, you can say, I've taken the course. Can I get that material? And you show me how to get it. But you should be able to always log back into your Canvas account and see it. All right. Good question. Other questions? Anybody else? So let me... Um, So you see this course is called Student Economics Course. This is the one that you guys will be able to download. And what you'll see is when you download it, it has it's laid out the same, but you don't see Module A. You don't see Module B. You don't see Module C. So you guys could download this. If you use Canvas, it's super easy. You download this, you import it into your Canvas, you're good to go, right? If you use Schoology or Google Classroom, it takes a little more effort. But th this is the course that at the end, you'll be, you'll be able to download all this material and work your way through. And all these quizzes and tests and so forth are in there. So if I'm a teacher in Canvas, if I'm teaching economics at a high school using Canvas, I'm looking at this like, man, that's a lot of free material that I could just go pull. That's great. Honestly, I don't know how some of y'all schools feel about it. But if I'm in a school that uses Schoology or Google Classroom, and I'm teaching economics, I would go download a free Canvas account. And if, with assuming my principal would have given me permission, I might tell my students, I want you to log into my free Canvas account. We're going to take quizzes there. We're going to, you know, I might actually use that free Canvas account with your students. And in worse, you know, even if, if that doesn't work, I'll just have to download some of these things out of Canvas and move them into Schoology or Google Classroom and put my quizzes there. So I, I'm going to have to do a little bit of work over the summer to prepare, to prepare it. Um, yes, the video for how to transfer to Google Classroom is on Canvas. Uh, you'll be able to see that at the end of the class. So, but yeah, that, there'll be some more work for, for you to do there, but um, that would be a possibility too. Just to just to spend some summertime moving some quizzes over, downloading the Nearpods. You know, you can download the Nearpods and just use them in your classroom outside of Canvas or outside of near, uh, Schoology or whatever. All right, all great questions. And those are questions we can help you with, especially as the class goes on. Into the class, you want to start adopting this material. We're happy to help you do that. So we want, that's what that's what we're here for to help you take this into your classroom. But yeah, this is I just want to show you guys this briefly. This is the student economics course. What's the difference? It takes out module A, module B, module C, and it's geared towards students. So that you you take your course and then you go take the, the student facing part, you download it, and that's what you use in your classroom. All right. So that's that's all this class is. Is there's there's a separate class called the student facing course where I stripped out some of the teacher facing modules. But this will be your class for the summer, uh, the master teacher class, the, the teacher facing class. All right, let me check my notes real quick. Um, everybody knows who to contact for what. Let me remind you all that. You'll contact me for economics course content. You'll contact Jessica Lewis for MCEE questions. So if you have a question about the competition, about your stipend, about your CEUs, that goes to Jessica Lewis. You have a question about um, the course content. I failed my tests. I can't get this to load. Uh, anything like that, that goes to me. Okay. Um, and you can message both of us by clicking people and clicking our names and send a message. Um, the due date's July 17th. I've already said that. Just one more reminder. You do get charged if you don't finish. And let's see. Any, any other things? I think we're going to wrap up here shortly. I told you we'd probably be 10, 15, 10, 30. We're getting close to that. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about before we wrap up? Does everybody, I want you to ask yourself, do I feel confident that I know where to log in, where to click, and how to get started? Does everybody feel confident about that? All right. So most of you have 
already logged into your Canvas account through MDE, Instructure, whatever, that link that Jessica sent the other day. Most of you have done that. If you've done that and you've logged in, when I click publish up here, this course is going to be visible. I'll go ahead and click it. This course should now be visible to you. So you can click and see it. All right. Um, you should click that course. Click the button that says modules. Start at the top and work your way straight through the course. Okay. And you can read. Yours, yours will look. I'll turn this back to student view. You can read what's expected of you. You're supposed to mark, you watch this or read it, mark it done. Read this, mark it done. Listen to this, mark it done. Contribute to this discussion forum, move forward. All right. That, those little letters down there tell you what you have to do to move forward. If something's blocked, it's because you haven't completed the assignment. All right. Um, you haven't completed, or, or if you take the quiz, it doesn't let you go forward because you didn't make an 80 or higher. You didn't make an 80 or higher. All right. So it'll tell you what you have to do. So everybody in this Zoom meeting should feel confident. I know where to log in. I know where to click my course. I know where to start on the course. And everybody should be off to the races. And if you have a question somewhere along the way, you ask me. But nobody nobody should leave this Zoom meeting without knowing at least where to start in the first assignment. Okay? Y'all feel good about that? Give me some thumbs up, some head nods, something. All right. Love it. So um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen just one second. We'll wrap up shortly. You should receive the jump drive probably maybe end of this week or early next. You don't need it till module B, which is the middle of the course. Um, so that that depends on the speed of the postal service. That, that um, let's see, the standards have not been updated. Okay, Edward, I'll, I'll look at that. Uh, the course was written to the standards at the time when the course was written. Uh, so if the standards have changed, there, if there's new material, I'd love to know it. If there's material removed or whatever, I'll, I'll look at it, but um, the course is not going to change if the standards have changed in the last couple of years. But we'll look at changing the course over time to, to move to the, if the standards have changed for some reason. Um, I was saying that, that jump drive that you're receiving, they cost about $150. They're very expensive, so don't lose it. Uh, you need it to complete this course. It has a ton of information on it, as you'll see. When you go through module B, the assignment is a scavenger hunt on that. So basically, it's like I give you a scavenger hunt to go through that jump drive and just explore it so you know what's on it. There's a lot of materials on it, assignments and so forth you can use in your class. And it's a very expensive. It's very expensive. If you lose it, you can't get another one without you have to pay for another one. So this, the Mississippi Council provides it to you. Don't lose it. Um, watch the mail. Make sure you get it. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be another week or so before you receive it because it's going to the postal service. It's whatever speed that they move them. Let's see. Let me look and see. I'm going to check and see who has and has not logged into Canvas. I have eight people total that have not um, accepted their invitations. So if you're, I'm going to read names. If you're here and I'll read your name, I want you to stay on Canvas after we wrap up. Yolanda Grayson, Aaron Green, Kelly Ladner, Eva Price, Edward Schneider, Kenetra Tucker, Kathy Wurzer, and McKinley Young. If I called, if I called out your name, I feel like I'm talking to kids. If I called your name, y'all stick around. Uh, it feels funny to, uh, anyways, it's always, it's always a funny position to, to teach teachers because I students teachers. Um, but the uh, otherwise, if you have questions for me, you're welcome to hang around and ask them. You guys know how to contact me on Canvas. You know where to go to log in and get started. Then you're welcome to uh, to leave now. Um, I'm excited to get started with y'all. Feel free to reach out uh, with any questions you may have. And good luck. Make a plan. Be diligent. Get started fast. July 17th at midnight, everything's due. So y'all are welcome to go if you know where to go and where to get started and you feel confident you have a plan. So see you guys online.
All right, a couple of you guys, I see several hanging around that I asked to hang around. Thank you for doing that. Um, let's talk. So everybody should have received an email from Jessica Lewis. If you did not receive that email, why don't you let me know? Uh, let's see. Somebody said they're on Canvas now. It says iPhone. I don't know who that is. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, the email's in your junk folder, Edward. I'm sorry about that. Um, let's see. So, Edward, it's not showing you as accepted the invitation yet, but you, there's, you should have an invitation to the course. Did you accept it? accepted it and I logged into Canvas already. Okay, let me let me look. Okay, it might not be updating, but I see your name says pending. Um for some reason, let me see. Because you said we had to log into Canvas by Monday. Yeah, yeah. Are you able when you pull uh Aaron Green? Let me look at yours real quick. Let's see. All right, Aaron Green, you're good. It updated. You're good to go. Um, okay, I, I see the uh, master teacher just went live on mine. Okay. And I just accepted it. Okay, let me see. Okay, it just registered that. Okay, so let yours. me see. If I... There's something you probably need to, to uh, accept. Okay, let me go and look at it now. And you said it came from Jessica? Yeah, if you have a Canvas account already, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, it came from Jessica. I'm having a problem with my password. You are? Um, she gave problem. the instructions to the password. Look on down in the email, and, it sh and you should see the instructions to how you log in. I mean, what's the correct password? And if that password still doesn't work, it gives you the option to reset your password. It said your username okay. Thank you. um will be your license number and your password should be the first two yeah, letters yeah, of your first name. name. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I need to accept um you say first time users will need to accept the acceptable use policy. Okay. So where do I accept it? At? I don't know. Have you logged in? Maybe you try to log in and see if it gives you the option. Okay, let me log back in. There should be, you should have like an invitation to the course too. You have to accept the invitation to the course. So I have, now I have Yolanda Grayson. Are you on here? Yes. Uh, Eva Price, I see you're here. Kenetra Tucker, Kathy Werzer, and McKinley Young. Those are the ones I'm missing. Everybody else is good to go. I'm having a problem going back to the. Okay, let me yes. go back to Canvas again. Wait a minute. Aaron, let me Green, go back you're to, okay to it. You're okay. And to then go. I got to go down. I was, you know what you're doing. Sir. I was talking to Aaron Green. Aaron, I think I got you logged in and ready to go if you're. Get you a if you're cook. Oh, I'm logged into my canvas, but it says something went wrong. Really? What's it? Um, what is it? What else does it say? Um, there was an error loading items to do pull to refresh to try again. Huh. Did you try to refresh it? Mm, yes, sir. And it's just it just keeps saying something went wrong. So let me try to log out and log back in. Okay. Are you on your phone logging in or yeah, on my phone. Okay. We might have to wait till you get to the computer and see if it works better somewhere else. But there's an app for Canvas, but I don't know if you can log in the first time on the app. Um I don't know. 
It worked fine the first time. Please feel free to instruct you below and reply to this email if you have any questions. What about you, Miss Kathy? Uh, are you having any luck? Okay, let me see. Can I accept the invite? I think I already accepted the invite. That's how I got into. Oh, somebody just got in. Let's see who it was. I already got you. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Who was it? Okay, let me try this. Indeed. Okay, I got it. <laughs> All right, oh, Kat, Miss Kathy, I see you got it. Uh, and then and yep. I, can see I got you. You're good to go. Both of y'all. Y'all okay. great. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. I'm having a problem with my password. Okay. Um, let's see. Have you found, did you, you found the email from Jessica, right? Yeah. I put in my okay. username, but my password I forgot it was something supposed to. I know something supposed to be about your your name and your license, last four digits of your license or something. Yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah, your username is your teacher license number, and your password is the first two letters of your first name. Then your last name. Okay. So, you know, mine would be B R Bolin, and then it would be the last four digits of your okay. life number. Okay. First two letters of your first name, then your last name. So I guess here's okay, the I got M C Young. Let's see. Right. And then the last four digits of your license number, all lowercase letters. Okay. What about you, Eva? How you doing? Yep. Oh no! Go back! Go back! Okay, I'm Yolanda Grayson. I'm in there. I'm doing you okay. Check. I'm trying to get my license number. Okay, great. Okay. I'm in there. I just got into medical now. Okay, Yolanda, say that again. Let me see. I think, uh, I, I think I'm in there. Oh, you are. You're good. I just see. Okay. I see it now. So you're good to go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so it keep kicking out my password. Well, it's showing me. I got MC Y O U N G. Yeah. I got MC Y O U N G. I typed in MC Y O U N G five three six three. Okay. I don't know. We we might need to check with them about yours. Is there an option to reset your password? Yeah, I see reset. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Let's reset your password and see if we can just get it to something okay. we know. Use the same. Use my username. It's the username. So I put in. Yeah, put put your teacher teacher uh, license number in there. Yeah. One five three six three. Okay. And then it said request a password. Yeah. 
Your pass for recovery instruction will be sent to 15363. Yeah, it's, it's this to, may take up to 30 minutes. Uh, it's going to send it to your email address. I have a McKinley Young 538 at yahoo.com. It's going to send it to that email address. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Let me check my email. Okay, it's not in my email yet. So you want me to stay on until I get? I mean, you want to stay? Want me to stay with you until I get it? Um, we can. I mean, if it might take up to thirty minutes, we can. We can dismiss. Like you know, we can go and then. Um, we can, but I do want you to try to get it done today. Um, so if we need to put you on the phone with somebody. Uh, yeah, I am. Yeah. So. I guess the problem is you don't you don't really have a good way to send me a message until you get logged into Canvas. So I'm going to send you my email address right. on the chat real quick. Uh, okay. Did you get that email address? Um, getting it. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Put it back. I didn't move it. Oh, oh okay. Okay, here. Okay. Let's see. I don't think okay, I, I got it. it. Okay. Eva, you have any luck? I guess I should be on. I have a Canvas account, which made a class from Bill Haven, so it kind of keeps me out of one through the app. So, but I should be now. Let me log in. Yeah, okay. I can see the course. Yeah, you're good to go. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. Uh, Mr. Young, do you have my email address? Yeah, I got it. Okay, do you want to just wait and see if it resets your password and send me an email and let me know um, this afternoon or uh, I don't want yes to, I will if it's gonna be 30 minutes we don't need to we don't have to wait here for that but I, I, want, I want I do want to make sure you get logged in I want to help you today if I need to so let me know okay I will okay you have my email right, address, you. Me a message and good luck and uh we'll get it taken care of today let's let's work on it and we'll, we'll see what we need to do yes sir all right well that's it for us bye everybody